Hey, Cody Rawl here coming to you from Alaska, my homeland, land of the midnight sun. We do get about uh, 19 hours of sunlight at the summer solstice up here, which is kind of fun. You know, the sun will go down at about 1 a.m., come up about 5 a.m. And uh, people always ask me about the midnight sun, so I thought I'd make a little video around midnight with the sun behind me. So what I wanted to talk about this week is a subject that's poised to probably completely revolutionize our understanding of neurocircuits in the brain. And that field is called optogenetics. It's been around for a couple of decades, but only until now when we've had more sophistication with genetic ma manipulation, we've actually seen the fruits of the labor from countless scientists and researchers. So basically, there are these proteins in certain organisms like bacteria, like green algae, for example, that are sensitive to light. Green algae has a protein called channel rhodopsin 2 that basically just allows the bacteria to get in the right area of the pond so that it can increase its photosynthesis the much possible. Scientists and researchers have the amazing idea to be able to use this protein in studies of neurobehavior. So they know these proteins actually open when the light hits them. And this influx of ions will affect the cell that is expressing them in the membrane. If you can imagine, if a neuron is expressing this gene, that if it was activated by light, the neuron would actually fire. So with painstaking research and development, scientists were actually able to have these genes expressed in mouse cells. What they did was take the genetic code from the green algae, put it in a virus, and then inject the virus into mice that were susceptible to genetic recombination and actually have the neurons of the mice express the protein that was sensitive to light. A couple of years ago at MIT, they were actually able to get uh, the spinal cord cells of a mouse to express inhibitory light proteins so that when they shone light onto the cells in the spinal cord with a microfilament, it actually turned off the messages for muscle stimulation going from the brain to the hind legs. And simply by turning on a switch, the mouse lost function of its hind legs. Now that might sound a bit sadistic, but the mouse instantly regained function when they turned off the light. Simply because without the light, the protein was no longer being activated and the function was restored. So how does this play into neurobehavior? Well, we have all these different neurocircuits in the brain and our main challenge right now to treating neuropsychiatric illness and understanding the function of the brain is knowing when and where these circuits in the brain are activated. The reason why optogenetics is so interesting is they seem to give us this incredible tool with unbelievable focus in turning off and on these circuits that allows us to observe the behavior when this is done so. So far, this has been done in reward pathways. The theory so far was that the amygdala in the brain was very important in reinforcing behavior, such as in drug addiction and other times when behavior is rewarded and increases the actual activity. In this experiment, they were able to have the amygdala in a mouse express the opsin proteins so that when a microfilament was turned on, it activated the amygdala in a certain way. In the experiment, all they had the mouse do was stick its nose through a hole. And simply by doing that, by sticking its nose through a hole, the switch was turned on, the amygdala was stimulated, and that's all there was. Yet even with that, they were able to have the mouse significantly increase its behavior of sticking its nose through the hole simply with its amygdala being activated. Now that's some pretty strong evidence of the amygdala's activity in the brain. And having that amount of precision in understanding the circuits of behavior is what really is going to propel us into our new understanding of how the brain functions. Obama recently put in 
millions upon millions of dollars in the National Institute of Health to develop research funding for understanding the circuits of the brain and mapping them out. Just recently, they published a report in June that showed that the first five years of development, they're merely developing the technology necessary to map the circuits. Now, I'm going to have a video in the future talking about the actual uh, progress that's been made at NIH, but I thought this was a nice addition to the idea of brain mapping and how genetic manipulation will actually help understand the function as well. So that's all I had to talk to you guys about today. I'm going to have another Alaska video, and also, as I said, I'm going to have a video about NIH coming up soon. Thanks for tuning in. Please leave comments and let me know what you think, and uh, have a great day. All right, thanks. Bye.